So could there be an actual cure for both alcohol and gambling addiction? This company seems to think so. Click here to learn more. All right, this is the Dales Report, and joining me on the podcast here today is the CEO of Awaken Life Sciences, Anthony Tennyson. Anthony, I appreciate you taking the time to join me here today. Hey, thanks, Chad. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Great to get to speak to you and your audience I, today. Here we are. Industry is growing rapidly. A lot of companies coming to the fruition, coming to the table, and a lot of investors are like, okay, who do I pick? This is becoming overwhelming. Um, you know, I, each time I see a press release, one company is hiring a world-renowned doctor, but I've heard a lot of great things about Awaken Life Sciences. There's a lot of work that you've been doing. So most importantly, let's first find out a little bit about who you are, why it's important, you think, for investors to invest in your company. Yeah, great. So listen, I'm absolutely happy to share that information. Uh, my name is Anthony. I'm the chief executive of Awaken Life Sciences. I I'm lucky enough to be the father of three kids and I'm married to a very patient wife, uh, Anna. Um, <laughs> I, am, I am delighted to be, uh, to be the chief executive of Awaken Life Sciences. It's very rare in one's life or one's career that one gets to do something that they really, really are passionate about, that they enjoy yeah. doing, but also they get the ability to do some good. And that yeah. is what we are doing as a company. Our core purpose that drives us relentlessly every single day is to provide hope for people, individuals, families, and communities that are suffering from substance and behavior addictions. Now, I worked in financial services for long enough, and the financial services district in, in Dublin and Ireland is adjacent to the North Inner City, which is one of the most, under, under, uh, most deprived, uh, socially deprived right. areas in, in, in Ireland. And I've seen up close and personal the damage that drug use does to individuals, families, and communities. Yes. But also as an Irish guy, we've kind of seen the damage that alcohol does to society as yeah. well. So massively motivated as an individual, but massively motivated as a company to try and address that as best we possibly can every single day. Well said. I like the way you come across and just uh, make it very, very clear and straight to the point. As you said, you've, you've established yourself as a leader in the space when it comes to addictive disorders with having conducted a phase two trial for alcohol use disorder. You'll also be submitting an IND application to the MHRA, which is basically equivalent to the FDA in North America to form a phase two B trial again for alcohol use disorder. So where are we, I guess, timeline on this and what can people expect next as far as uh, further developments on this and a lot of the research that's actually going to be unfolded from uh, the trials that were already completed. Yeah, great, great questions. So what we do as a company, right, is we do two things. We do development and delivery of th psychedelic therapeutics to better treat addiction. So okay. that means we're developing drugs and therapies to be used together to address substance and behavior addictions. And those are those are chronic diseases that are currently poorly treated. Substance addictions like alcohol, tobacco, and illicit and prescription drugs affect about 20% yep. of the global population. Behavioral addictions affect another significant minority of people with gambling disorder, for example, affecting about 6% of the global population. So about mm -hmm. 300 to 400 million people. These are chronic diseases. So what we're doing is we're working with ketamine and MDMA in the near term to develop the therapies part of that therapies package or therapeutics package, I should say. And we are also developing our own drugs to do better treat addiction using psychedelic drugs than any other compounds that are currently available. And we'll bring those therapies and those drugs together into a single therapeutics package in due course. But not only that, not are we, as you said, at the leading edge of the biotech research and the use of psychedelics, drugs and therapies to treat addiction. We've also got near term revenue streams. We've got clinics revenue starting this fiscal year. We've got two yep. clinics active with another 18 to come across in the next couple of years. And then we right. also look to access the North American market through a licensing partnerships or a franchise model starting February of next year. So hmm. your questions around phases of, dr of drug discovery. So we've acquired the IP, the assets and the team from a f completed phase two AB trial for ketamine okay. to treat alcohol use disorder in the UK. That's really great because that ketamine, we get the ability to deliver the IP from that trial in our clinics immediately. So we're the only company in the world wow. delivering evidence-backed yeah. ketamine-assisted psychotherapy for alcohol use disorder. The results of that trial will be published this quarter in the American Journal of Psychiatry. 
Okay. And we are in the process of assessing how best to bring that research forward into a phase three pivotal trial in the UK under the guidance of the MHRA, which is the UK version of the FDA. Key thing here is if we secure that, we secure on-label use for ketamine to be delivered the way our team have designed it to treat alcohol use disorder in the UK. And we then go and try and do that in other territories. So you've indicated that you're a global leader in alcohol use disorder. You also announced, obviously, the behavioral side of uh, uh, gambling addiction. Yep. Uh, this one really grabbed my attention. How big do you think this opportunity is? Because I know, and it's the same, obviously, in the UK and Europe, but everywhere here in North America, they're legalizing gambling and sports betting. And it's becoming more and more part, of, I guess, of society. So saying that... Uh, what's the opportunity, I guess, present? It's I don't always, know if it's, it's for opportunity is the right word. Yeah, you've taken the words right out of my mouth there. It's always difficult to look at this through the lens of commercial and opportunity because these are individuals, families and communities that are, being, are suffering, right? Um, there's significant relapse rates in the treatment right. for, for all types of addiction. You know, before I answer about gambling, but if you look at alcohol, there's a, there's a 75% relapse rate for alcohol use disorder in the first yeah. 12 months. And that results in there only being 16% of people who have suffered from this disease seeking treatment because they know right. it's not going to be effective. So it's beholden upon companies like us to change that and change that quickly. And that's what we're looking to do. If you look at gambling disorder, the way that we're going at treating addiction, Shad, it's different than any other company in the world has ever tried to do it before. They typically try, try and switch off individual receptor sites, binder sites at a neurobiological level. And that just isn't effective. We understand more about the brain circuitry, how about addiction affects the brain circuits than any other company in the world through the team of world-renowned experts that work for us, like Professor David Nutt, Professor Sylvia right. Morgan, Dr. Van Sessa. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to use those drugs that I mentioned before, ketamine and MDMA, and in due course, our own compounds, to disrupt the brain circuits that house the addictive behaviors, that, that sort of control, take control over the personality of someone and, in, and results in them repeatedly consuming addictive substances and exhibiting addictive behaviors. And because of that approach, it gives us the ability to state that we think we can cure or address substance and behavioral addictions. And so to yeah. your question, we have initiated what we believe to be the first study of its kind in the world, which is to treat a, a behavioral addiction, gambling addiction, with a, a psychedelic. In fact, we believe it's the first time that anyone has even attempted to treat a behavior addiction with any type of drug. Let alone a lot the of synergies of between gambling addiction and alcohol use disorder, correct? They're, the reward mechanisms are quite similar. We've seen the brain scans of people who, you know, you scan them when they're placing a bet and the dopamine that fires off, the reward and pleasure sensors that fire off in the brain is very similar or similar, relatively similar to people consuming other types of, or types of addictive substances. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to see if ketamine in particular can be effective at disrupting the memory formation that drives gotcha. some of the addictive behaviors in gambling. And to your point, yeah, gambling has become it's become interwoven in society yeah. in the same way that alcohol is interwoven in society. And this is some people, most people can handle a few drinks or can handle placing a few bets. But for many people, for 5% of the planet for, for alcohol, 6% of the planet for, for gambling, they can't. And has a massive negative impact on them, their families and their communities. And we want to address that. Yeah. And it's only become even worse, uh, obviously, since COVID has taken place. Uh, when I look at the research that you're providing, um, to have somebody like Dr. David Nutt, that's obviously associated with the company, he's arguably one of the most respected doctors in the psychedelic industry across the entire world. Um, what do you think uh, was, I guess, this like, how did the conversations begin with uh, Dr. Nutt and what intrigued him about everything that you were doing? Um, so we were lucky enough. Uh, we've got four, four, four co-founders in the company, myself, the CFO, the chairman and Dr. Ben Sessa. So Dr. Ben Sessa is our chief medical officer. He's world renowned in his own right in the area of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. He, in fact, led the world's first study for MDMA to treat alcohol use disorder. And we've acquired the IP from that. We're looking to bring that forward from phase 2A into phase 2B. 
but Ben and David are quite close friends. David would be a mentor of Ben. So when Ben, you know, when we got talking to Ben, we brought him on as a co-founder. He naturally started speaking with David. We began a journey with David, starting off with David coming on as the chair of our scientific advisory committee meeting. Yeah. And when we got to know David and David, more importantly, got to know us and to trust us. Mm-hmm. And we obviously respected and trusted David straight off the bat. And um, he then... We began, myself, David, Ben, and John, CFO, working out what was the strategic direction that we really wanted to take this company and where could we help most people soonest. And it was in the treatment of addiction. And it was there when we got into really into David's area of specialism and specialty and an area where he is a world authority. And as a result of that, it was a pretty easy decision for us to choose to to acquire six years worth of proprietary research from Professor David Dutt's consultancy company, and as part of that transaction, appoint David as our chief research officer. So David is driving much of our drug discovery program that we're running with Evotech, the world's largest drug discovery company. But he's also driving an awful lot of our strategy around how to use psychedelics to disrupt the brain circuitries that enables us to treat both substance and behavioral addictions. And like you say, he's a global authority, 400 papers, 20 books, former advisor to the UK state, head of department in Imperial College, and actually just a really, really nice guy. <laughs> I'm blown away on the story that you're presenting and obviously everything that you've explained here today. And when I look at your current market cap versus other companies at this stage of the game, meaning phase two trials, needless to say, you seem to be undervalued in comparison to your peers. So in your opinion, what is the market missing right now? I don't know if I'm going to blame the market for missing anything. I think, you know, we maybe could do a better job on communicating our message, which we're certainly going to start doing. You know, we've, we're sponsoring, um, Wonderland. We're doing a whole lot of media, uh, around that, but also we've got to do a good job on executing faster and better. And to that end, you know, we've got some publicly available and pre- previously stated publicly available milestones, which include the publication of that phase 2B trial that we acquired the IP and the team and the assets for. So that's due to be published this quarter. And we'll be one of the first psychedelics companies to be publishing the results of a phase 2B trial. We've also, you know, we're bringing that phase 2A MDMA trial forward and to seek to secure marketing authorization, to submit a clinical trial application as part of our program to secure marketing Mm -hmm. authorization for MDMA to treat alcohol use disorder. And we've got clinics that we're going to be opening up and continue to open up over the next while. So, you know, it's not really the market's fault. It's us. We're going to, we've got a lot of okay. transformate, transformative catalyst events coming down the track in the next couple of weeks and months. And we're going to communicate those out. And by the time we finish communicating those out, I firmly believe that we will be at the forefront of this industry in research. And I think then it's going to be clear to investors where the value differential really is. And then, you know, the real kind of home home base for this company is on the NASDAQ. And that yeah, is the okay. end goal for the company is to get onto the NASDAQ in as prompt a manner as is, you know, as is sensible for us to do so. And I think, you know, combination of us executing, communicating and getting onto the NASDAQ will, I believe, close that gap, that, that value differential between us and some of the tier one players in this industry. Another example that we're still very early in this stage, but hearing stories like this, I think there's some really, really blue skies and obviously most importantly, providing help and hope for a lot of people related to alcohol use disorder and, uh, you know, even gambling addiction, which uh, is only going to manifest, I think, as I said earlier, now that COVID has unfolded. But listen, really, really find this story fascinating. I appreciate your time. Let's keep in touch. Uh, listen, absolute pleasure. I'm happy to come back as we announce those milestones coming down the track in the next couple of weeks and months. It'd be great to come back on here and chat with you again. Yeah, it's great. Anthony, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Thanks everyone for watching and make sure to like this video and please feel free to leave a comment. Also subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications bell to receive all new videos posting featuring stocks that are moving in the crypto, psychedelic and cannabis space, and also notifications on monthly cash giveaways. You don't want to miss it. Thanks, everyone.